So then we come to the last topic for today, and this is current and voltage dividers. So we have, if we want to look at the voltage divider, we need to have something where voltage can be divided. Um, for example, two resistors in series. And so as we've said, two resistors in series, uh, there will be the very same current and this total voltage drop will split up into partial voltages V1 and V2. And so now, of course, what you could do is, um, or let's say what is given, we know the two resistors, we know this voltage, we know the total voltage, and we want to have the partial voltage V1, or we want to have the part partial voltage V2. And so how could you calculate them with what you have learned so far? Yeah, so we could say we take the sum of the two resistors because this would be the equivalent resistance. Then we take um, voltage divided by resistance. This will give us the total or the current in this case. And then currents, current times the individual resistance. This will be the individual voltage drop here. So of course we can calculate this, but we have to take the detour or we have to calculate the current first. It's not very complicated, but we have to calculate the current first. And the idea of this voltage divider rule is to have an equation that allows you to calculate the voltage, the partial voltages, without calculating the current first. Okay, so, but what we do is, as you said, the rules, the laws that we can use to calculate any circuit, let's say, we, we use Kirchhoff's voltage law, write it down. Uh, total voltage is the sum of the individual voltages. Current law says all the currents are equal. Then we have Ohm's law at each of the resistors. And now we insert Ohm's law into our Kirchhoff's voltage law and, oops, and, and um, take, because the current is the same, take the, take the current out of this um, out of the sum, let's say. And so the total voltage is current times more or less total resistance. And so now we can take a ratio between the partial voltage and the total voltage and then the current will cancel because the current is the same. So we get that the, the ratio between these two partial voltages is the same as the ratio of the resistances or partial voltage to total voltage is partial resistance by total resistance. This is the voltage divider rule. And this work, works for the first voltage, is of course also works for the second voltage. That's the idea. And so you can write this down in a slightly different way, uh, but it's the same equation as before. Partial voltage is total voltage multiplied with partial resistance divided by total resistance. And so this factor here Resistance, partial resistance divided by total resistance is called a voltage divider factor. And we have two of them, one for the first voltage, one for the second voltage in this case. And if you would have not just two, but N series resistors, you could also write it down like this. Uh, that's always the partial resistance divided by the sum of all the resistances, partial voltage divided by total voltage. Okay, this is the voltage divider for two resistors. And of course, now you can also use, try to use this for more complicated circuits. So for example, we have one resistor, a second resistor, and then two resistors in parallel. And so we know all these values and we want to have these partial voltages. And if you now just write down this equation, um, then this voltage here is this resistance divided by the total resistance multiplied with the total voltage. And if you want to have the second voltage, then it's this resistance divided by the same total resistance multiplied with the same total voltage. If you want to get this last voltage here, then of course you do not just take R2 or just R3. You take the parallel circuit of R3 and R4 divided by this total resistance multiplied with the total voltage gives you the partial voltage. Okay, so yeah, and if you have even more complicated circuits, let's say we have a total voltage here, we have these resistors, and we want to have at the end this voltage here at, at the end, V4. So and we can at first set up, yeah, so 
V4 needs to be calculated, we can at first set up a voltage divider with these two resistors here and say if we take this voltage, ah, there should be some voltage here, if we take this voltage, which is also the same across as across these two resistors, and take this first voltage divider factor, we would get the voltage at the end. And the question is, okay, how do we get this voltage? And this voltage is, okay, this equivalent partial resistance R2 in parallel to R3 plus R4 divided by the total resistance of the circuit multiplied with total source voltage. Um, yeah, and then if you insert this into one equation, you have the partial voltage, total voltage, you have one voltage divider factor and the second voltage divider factor. So you can apply this several times, one after the other, if you have more complicated circuits that still uh, follow this parallel and, and um, series circuit rules. Okay, and so if you can do it for voltages, you can also of course do it for currents. Um, so if we want to have something where current divides, we need to have two resistors in parallel. And so now um, I, I cannot show it because I would need to click back and forth several times. But if you, if you check these slides um, for the current and the voltage divider, it's the very same slides, except that every current I changed into voltage, every voltage I changed into current. Kirchhoff's voltage law I changed into cur Kirchhoff's current law and vice versa and resistance I changed into conductance. So now we can write down Kirchhoff's current law. Uh, total current is sum of individual currents. Kirchhoff's voltage law, the voltages are the same in this case. Uh, Ohm's law, it's easier to write it like this uh, with, with some conductance G. Remember that was just one over R. And then we can do the same thing, um, insert or calculate total current and then take the ratio of these two. The voltages will cancel and so we get uh, the ratio between the partial currents is the ratio between the conductances. The ratio between the partial current and the total current is the ratio between the partial conductance and the total, total conductance. What, what, what we had before. And in the, in the parallel circuit, if you want to have the total conductance, you take the sum of the individual conductances. Remember the question in the quiz with the tin layer and the copper layer uh, that have been like parallel resistances on, in, as on, the, on the trace on the printed circuit board. Okay, and so of course, you can also write this down um, like this, as we, did, as we did before for the um, uh, for the voltage divider rule. And you can also do it for n parallel resistors, no problem. Then you have this individual and the sum and so on. So, and then um, still something is a bit different uh, or can be written in a different way because usually you have given the resistors and you don't want to write down this equation with conductances. Um, so, of course, we could say, um, yeah, if we take this first, first equation and if we insert the resistances, then G is one over R, G is one over R, G is one over R. And so now we have an, an ugly term uh, that has two, or it's, it's a double fraction, but we could expand the numerator and the denominator both with R1 and R2. And so then on top the R1 will cancel each other and we get R2 and here also R1 will cancel each other, here R2 will cancel each other and we get R1 plus R2. And so then our current divider rule looks like the voltage divider rule but in, in a different way that if we want to have the current I1, then R2 is in the numerator. And if we would calculate the current I2, then R1 would be in the numerator. So it's exactly the other resistor divided by the sum of the resistances if we would take them, uh, if we would calculate them in a loop. Okay, 
Um, yeah, and then of course you can once again apply this to a more complicated circuit. So if we have a voltage source, if we have a resistor here, if we have a resistor over there, um, then yeah, we could, and we want to have this, this current here at the end, then we could write down a first current divider for this position that takes into account, let's say, this total current with respect to this node and this current divider factor here. And as you can see, if we want to have the current I4, we take the other resistor in the numerator. Okay, and so the next step would be, okay, if we want to have this partial current with respect to this total current, we take the other resistor, which is R1, and divide by R1 plus the sum of this total equivalent resistance, and this is, uh, as you can see, R2 plus R3 parallel to R4. Okay, and so then the last step is we would need to have this total current, and the total current is voltage divided by total resistance. So source current is source voltage divided by total resistance of the circuit, and then you can put this all into one equation, which once again gets very long. But um, yeah, so we have total current, a first current divider factor, a second current divider factor, and that's it. So you can also apply this one after the other, one after the other in more complicated circuits.